is dedicated to digital diplomacy. Uh, our event consists of two parts in which um, the part, first part will be dedicated uh, to, uh, we'll be focusing on uh, definition of digital diplomacy, mainly by focusing on contrasts between uh, traditional diplomacy and digital one. Um, Andrzej Stuczynski, our guest, will talk about the impact of modern technologies on diplomacy, the role of digital diplomacy uh, as an instrument of foreign policy, and Polish foreign service in the era of digital diplomacy. Our second uh, uh, part of second part of our webinar is going to mainly focus on uh, NAVA, the Polish National Agency for Academic Exchange Experience, and our guest Malvina Gretzka will at the beginning uh, discuss uh, the role of social media as a tool of digital diplomacy, and then she will present the um, experience of NAVA by uh, focusing on several um, projects. First, it's Ready, Study, Go Poland campaign. Uh, second, international education fairs, which are held annually, uh, but due to current situation and uh, other circumstances this year, uh, exceptionally, was held online, virtually. That's why it's really interesting for us right now. Uh, also, uh, Malvina will talk about NAVA's newly initiated program, Digital Ambassadors of Poland, which implies cooperation with foreign students and alumni. Um, of Polish higher education institutions in the field of promoting Poland as an attractive study destination. And the last part of our uh, event will mainly focus on uh, NAVA's cooperation uh, with the EU in the field of higher education. Uh, so, um, Speaking about the main aim of our event, it's uh, mainly providing our audience with information related to digital diplomacy uh, and giving you a precise definition of it. Because even though we use prefixes like digital, cyber, tech, e, uh, net pretty often, we don't have a common understanding and it creates a little confusion. Uh, that's why we will begin with giving a precise definition. When I was preparing for our event and was reading several articles, I found out that some people see digital diplomacy as the growing use of information and communication and also social media platforms in the conduct of uh, public diplomacy. In other words, some people claim that uh, digital diplomacy is a part, continuation and extension of public diplomacy. Others believe that it is more than just a tool because it has developed recently uh, and it has become a new branch, a new type of diplomacy, uh, and also a new dimension in the conduct of foreign policy. That's why I will ask my first question, uh, Andrzej. How do you see digital diplomacy and what are uh, the contrasts between digital diplomacy and the traditional one? Well, that's, uh, that's a pretty complex thing, I believe. And uh, of course, you partially uh, answered the question already, and that would be my answer as well. Um, I don't know. Uh, can we before before continuing? To, can we have a presentation now? But possibly. Yes, of course, of course. I'm already showing uh, my screen. Just a second. Please. Yeah. Uh, so maybe let's move to the third slide. Uh, yeah. So uh, it seems to me that um, that there is um, there is big issue with 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 um, and, and big difficulty with um, precise definition of of what is digital diplomacy indeed. Um, first thing I would like I would like to start with, with the, the thing that, that you have already touched, public diplomacy, extension of public diplomacy. Can we move to the next slide, please? Yes, sure. So um, majority of definitions emphasize uh, on public diplomacy, emphasize public diplomacy context. A main focus is put on usage on social media as practical channel of communication. So internet and social media in particular are perceived as new tool to get wider audience outreach. Uh, and here you would find, um, well, either a diplomatic, well, diplomatic, different diplomat, different types of diplomatic missions, embassies or um, culture institutes like Goethe Institute, 
uh, some some new initiative uh, together with Gazeta Wyborcza, uh, having a um, series of coverages on uh, contemporary Germany, uh, but uh, also uh, other things like, next slide, please. Um, and on the archive uh, side of uh, Polish Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, you would see a diagram indicating how many Twitter, Facebook, YouTube uh, accounts um, and Polish uh, diplomatic missions abroad have. Uh, and this is strongly connected with attempt of measuring quality by quantity. So how many accounts, how many followers, subscribers we have. And what is also interesting, um, can we see the next slide, please? Um, this is uh, from the, this, this uh, graphic is from uh, the article on the website of Russian International Affairs Council from 2018. Um, and this uh, shows uh, activity of um, Russian politicians, uh, governmental officials in media, uh, somehow seeing um, their places in the rating you you could think that this indicates uh, this would we can think that uh, this indicate efficiency of um, of their um, of their work of their actions, but I'm not that convinced that numbers here are so helpful. Uh, if you would check that diplomacy website uh, that you can see uh, in the um, top left corner of the of the graphic. Uh, so uh, you would see that in the in the 50 most active world leaders are people from uh, relatively unknown areas of the world, uh, relatively unknown leaders. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure if that um, relation between uh, how something is popular and some, how something is influential is real. Anyway, uh, for sure, uh, many, many definitions uh, focus uh, on, on public diplomacy context. However, um, current trend is to be different. And new definitions, I would say from around 2015 and later, um, are indicating new dimension or at least potential for quality change that digital diplomacy brings with it. Um, I can highly recommend work by Olaf Oshitsa. Next slide, please. Um, who asks, uh, the work is from, from, from last year. And Oshitsa asks a number of intriguing questions and presents several areas in which potential of diplomacy free zero, as he calls it, um, in comparison to one zero traditional and two zero current one based on ICT uh, usage uh, would, be, would be visible. So um, somehow this would be the uh, answer to, to, the, uh, to the question that we have in the subject of our webinar. Now we have this diplomacy, uh, digital diplomacy 2.0. This is continuation of public diplomacy, but in, it has potential to be something more in future. And uh, you would ask me uh, what exactly would be the, those new things. Oshita indicates uh, usage of virtual reality, big data, translator tools, databases. Uh, so uh, to me, these are uh, great points, but still to some extent connected to tools only. Uh, right now, uh, social media would be would be tool of, of press services uh, of um, communication departments like like in our uh, case with, with Malvina um, but if we if we looking for a more general answer I would say uh, we should also think about uh, new political issues to be regulated so for, for example uh, how, how we regulate freedom in the internet how we regulate uh, issues related to the citizenship to the to the borders uh, Usually, we, we, we do not feel that, that there are any borders uh, in internet, unless we, we go to the other geographies in which some, some things, um, 
some, some kind of social media might, might be restricted. And so um, to, to make it more clear, this uh, new diplomacy, this new digital diplomacy would bring at least two more things uh, to, except from, from social media. One would be new tools and another would be new areas of policy to, to be regulated, to be negotiated between nations. Um, well, I was focusing only on, on, on one source, but it is interesting to, to see how uh, ministries, different ministries of foreign affairs are uh, defining this. For example, French Ministry for Europe and Foreign Affairs sees um, digital diplomacy of, as uh, something that refers both to the ministry domains of action, the international challenges of digital technology, and widening the scope of traditional diplomacy through innovations and new practices brought about by information and communication technologies. However, digital tools are considered as much more than a simple means of communication information. They are helping transform diplomatic work. So I would say, and this is pretty close to, to the, to the um, Oshitsa approach, um, but also there is some difficulty again to, to define it. We can see communication information right now, and we can see that it can be something more, but uh, we are struggling a little bit to, to understand what, what would be, uh, what, what it really would be. Uh, fine. Uh, after uh, this part, I would say, um, again, to, to, to close up this part, um, now I, I think we, we have um, in, in most countries, uh, in most of the world, we are having this diplomacy, digital diplomacy 2.0 uh, based on, on social media. We can have more in future. Um, so, um, to understand it better, let's try to, to compare it with uh, traditional diplomacy. And uh, maybe we can move to the next slide uh, with new actors and uh, straight forward to, to, to the next one. Uh, in some articles, in, in some sources, you would see that um, Digital diplomacy uh, see many new actors. People trying to define digital diplomacy can see uh, many um, uh, new participants in the diplomatic process, except from governments uh, or in a more narrow approach, except from ministries of foreign affairs, we have um, president and other higher officials, uh, presidents and other higher officials using Twitter. So, uh, directly with, without consulting with, with uh, their MFAs, uh, connecting with the people. We see non-governmental organizations, we see business, and we see individual people. Um, but, um, well, to me, uh, that uh, with, with individual people, of course, uh, there are influencers and there are people who, who um, are uh, exposing some ideas uh, that politicians and in diplomats uh, can take. Uh, but I'm not sure if, if people like Greta Thunberg can, can really um, influence um, in things by, by, by uh, her social media or her activity um, to, to, to that, that extent as other actors, uh, at least business. And next slide, please. So uh, the thing that you can see in the uh, top uh, left-hand corner is uh, undersea um, uh, internet fiber cable. Um, perhaps some of you have read an uh, interesting article in, in uh, one of the latest issues of, of Politica. Um, commenting on um, some, some potential risks that um, damage to, to the, such cables that are connecting all world uh, would have to, to, to internet. And, and apparently some countries 
are trying to, to, to influence it that way, but uh, simply damaging uh, uh, and, and making communication more, more difficult around the world. But um, what is more important, those cables, this infrastructure, simply uh, speaking in other words, uh, is uh, mostly um, private owned, owned by private companies. In the case of traditional infrastructure, let's say roads, airports, so on and so forth, uh, in most cases, state is, uh, is having ownership and states are engaged into, into regulations, uh, into international regulations on this. Uh, with with uh, such things as, as cables, as internet connections, we are still yet to, to, to see um, uh, regulations, uh, treaties on, on this. And uh, that would be perhaps one of the challenges that uh, digital diplomacy would, would have in the future. Uh, I'm sorry, please. Andrzej, we are, move, yep. uh, we are running out of time. So I think we should move to your next experience, uh, Nava. And sure. I would like to ask you, as a former diplomat, I know that you still cooperate with embassies. And as I know, you organized an event last July, which was organized in cooperation with Polish Embassy in Jakarta, Indonesian Embassy in Poland, and one of NAVA's digital ambassadors. Could you tell us more about it, please? Uh, I think it was very efficient. It was an example of very efficient use of social media and uh, leveraging this with, with uh, using position of uh, diplomatic missions, both uh, in, in foreign mission in Poland and Polish mission in, uh, in Indonesia. Uh, I think that with, with their support, we were able to, to gain uh, audience. And on a working level, we were also able to, uh, to show to the audience why it is attractive to, to come to Poland, to, to study in Poland, uh, to, to, to present pretty comprehensive picture in a, um, in a nice fashion without uh, speaking too, too much, just show, showing the sources, uh, showing cru most crucial information to, to, to the people. And what, is, what was the perfect thing for, for us? Thanks to, to uh, internet access, thanks to... Um, having net, thanks to having web. Uh, so, so the fact that we didn't need to use, uh, you know, vertical approach asking, uh, let's say uh, our ministry or, or Indonesian ministry of foreign affairs to, to, to access to the to, to diplomats, just uh, connecting, commu communicating, connecting with them directly. Uh, that helped us to, to arrange it uh, very quickly. And of course, uh, this was very helpful. That this facilitated uh, things a lot. So, so that kind of, that is also some, some advantage of digital diplomacy. You save a lot of time, a lot of effort, uh, and uh, be, because you can connect freely with the people. Okay, uh, so, so um, I, I think I, I understand that I have, have little more time. I wanted to say that some things, of course, cannot be done by, by uh, digital, in, in a digital fashion. And uh, here you can see a meeting that took a place in the Hyderabad house uh, in, in, in New Delhi. Um, most of you, I'm um, pretty sure, uh, knows that gentleman next to Barack Obama is Narendra Modi, but I'm not sure if all of you know that after Donald Trump, he's number two most popular uh, uh, Twitter user in the world. So even guy, guy like him, who, who is digital guru, I would say, uh, still uh, needs to needs to use uh, tools of, of uh, traditional diplomacy, face-to-face uh, -face meetings. Um, this is crucial thing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let's let's go to, to, to the slide with a text. Um, focus on gathering and analyzing informa information. Uh, social media are best if we talk about promotion and communication. Uh, but in the work of diplomat, you need to get information uh, and not from the papers, not from the um, generally uh, accessible uh, sources, 
but talking to 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 other politicians uh talking um to to, to people who, who would not reveal the, their views uh, to to public um it would be pretty difficult i guess to to do it um in a digital way of course you can use mails you can use phone and, and so on but still um living living men um and face to face interactions um i believe uh you, you cannot uh stop doing this you cannot stop using this uh this won't be efficient uh for for diplomacy if, if we would uh based on digital only uh i could see this as complementary to to the traditional uh way of doing things and yes uh, if we if we go maybe this would be the, the last thing uh, i guess that the, the slide with the um, those few uh, this article free from uh, vienna convention on diplomatic relations yeah. if you would see the the points here i believe uh doing a b and e is pretty much feasible uh with the means of digital diplomacy uh, e is pretty obvious. Again, it's communication, um, and A is the same. B is interesting thing uh, to me. Protecting um, state, how you can say, you can ask me how you can protect the, the interest of, of state and its nationals with the with the Facebook. Well, you can uh, in case of uh, consular crises, um, you can uh, connect with the people. Uh, Thanks to the databases, for example, a Polish Ministry of Foreign Affairs has this uh, Odysseus database mm -hmm. that enables registering before going abroad and facilitates contact uh, between the ministry and, and the citizens in case of any crisis. But with C and D, um, well, I believe uh, this would be pretty difficult. Again, it's that something that I just mentioned a moment ago. Um, getting information from, from the sources uh, like uh, high-level politicians, governmental officials, uh, this would be difficult in my opinion um, in, by, by the means of digital diplomacy. Uh, okay, so uh, my last question is related to current situation. We live in uncertain times and I realize that answering this question might be hard, but uh, what do you think after the situation is over and our lives are back to normal, is digital diplomacy going to be as important as and as crucial as it is right now, or is its popularity going to eventually decrease? Well, I, I'm, I'm convinced without a doubt that uh, it, uh, digital diplomacy value will be increasing. Uh, the, the problem now is that we still do not have complete understanding of, of how to use it. Uh, we can see the potential, like I, I, I said, um, talking about the, the definition that you can find on the website of the French Ministry of, of Foreign Affairs. So without a doubt, uh, its its value, its importance will uh, will increase. No matter, uh, well, regardless of the of the COVID crisis, uh, we simply need to 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 uh, see the big picture. And I think most of us are, are still struggling. Even even the the the. the the states that are having this very well developed are still looking for the for the best possible ways for, for new possibilities. Hmm. Uh, thank you very much, Andre. Uh, I think now we can move to the second part of our uh, webinar, uh, which is uh, dedicated to NAVA, Polish National Agency for Academic Exchange and uh, social media as well. Uh, our speaker, M Marvina, is mainly going to focus on programs of NAVA and also on uh, social media as a tool uh, of digital diplomacy. Uh, Marlina, I would like to ask you to describe the role of social media in promoting Polish higher education institutions uh, among foreign students, foreign students and scientists, uh, and tell us about NAVA's experience in the fields of promoting Poland using tools offered by digital diplomacy. Thank you, Nina. Thank you for introduction and thank you, thank you for this uh, this question. And uh, well, I think that today's topic and generally the the role of uh, of social media and uh, 
and digital diplomacy um, is really important. And as actually uh, Andre has already mentioned, uh, nowadays digital diplomacy and uh, has actually a tremendous power. Sorry for the sound. Um, and by digital word, I mean actually all digital tools we use, uh, social media, websites, but also digital marketing that is uh, really important and we, we can't forget about it. Um, there is actually no doubt that uh, social media or digital tools can, can change our reality and even can change the uh, course uh, of uh, history because uh, we know that, for example, political uh, elections uh, have been uh, won by means of digital tools. Uh, just to mention, for example, uh, Trump's uh, presidential election in 2016. So uh, there is no doubt that uh, this uh, actually tool has a tremendous power. But I think that actually um, last months uh, have shown us that uh, digital tools and uh, social media uh, can be even a substitute uh, for the normal life we used to uh, we used to know or stationary activities that we actually uh, were undertaking before. And uh, even if I am familiar with digital tools, um, I still think that last uh, months uh, have uh, taught me a lot uh, in this field. Uh, can you hear me well, actually? Uh, yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Uh, so, um, so today I would like to, to share um, my experience with you and uh, to present uh, activities uh, that we undertake uh, at the Polish National Agency for Academic Exchange uh, to take a little bit more on the uh, practical aspects uh, of the use of uh, social me media in uh, promoting uh, Polish higher education system abroad. So. Um, as I'm not sure if you are familiar with uh, our agency, I would just uh, uh, shortly present to you our mission and, uh, and activities. So uh, our agency, Polish National Agency for Academic Exchange, uh, was established in 2017. And um, the, the main aims of the agency include uh, reinforcing the scientific excellence, uh, internationalization, of Polish uh, universities and scientists. We also promote Poland as a study destination. Uh, and we also promote Polish language uh, and culture. And uh, we do so by implementing and, uh, and operating uh, programs addressed to different target groups. So we have some programs um, addressed to uh, Polish institutions, to uh, Polish and international scientists and to international students. And if we go to the next slide, uh, one of the projects that is uh, particularly close to my heart uh, is uh, called Ready Study Go Poland campaign. And uh, this is the official campaign and uh, promoting Poland uh, as a study destination. And uh, we, with this campaign, we are trying to reach uh, um, all potential students and beneficiaries and uh, to provide them with uh, uh, information about studies in Poland, uh, admission procedures and visa procedures. And uh, within the campaign, we also set up Polish booths and stands uh, at international conferences, uh, well, all over the world, but uh, a situation has changed. Uh, you can imagine that it also uh, changed. Uh, it has changed uh, recently, so I, I will talk about it uh, later. Um, but um, we, uh, within the campaign, we also support uh, Polish embassies, Polish diplomatic missions abroad. Uh, we provide them with promotional and information materials, but also, as, uh, as Andrzej mentioned, uh, we also um, organize uh, the web webinars or uh, if we go uh, and participate in some educational affairs, we also meet with uh, higher education institutions in particular countries. So maybe to sum up, we, uh, we actually uh, work and um, organize all activities that can support uh, Polish universities uh, in promoting their offer abroad, but also we, uh, we, we actually do ourselves uh, uh, all we can do to, to, to attract international students uh, to, to come to Poland. So this is uh, like main aims. Uh, those are main aims of this uh, of this campaign. 
so speaking of Ready, Study, Go Pond campaign uh, and representing NAVA at, different, uh, at uh, several uh, international education fairs, uh, I know that NAVA takes part in those fairs annually, but as we all know, this year has been uh, a little bit different from what we expected it to be. So my question is, how, do, uh, how did NAVA adjust to new realities? And as I know, due to suspended flights uh, and closed borders, some of fairs got cancelled and some were just moved to virtual uh, digital space. So could you please uh, describe uh, your experience and NAVA's experience on those virtual fairs? Mm -hmm. Yes, well, mm, due to COVID-19, uh, actually, we had to reorganize our work because, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, we are uh, we work, uh, we actually are responsible for international promotion of higher education. And as NAVA, as the agency, uh, doesn't have uh, external offices like, for example, DAD, Campus France or British Council, they, uh, they have uh, they all have uh, in external offices, we we unfortunately uh, we don't. Uh, uh, basically, our promotional and communication activities were based on using digital tools, but still uh, we were participated uh, like annually in 10 international first, uh, more or less. And, uh, and we, we uh, actually set up uh, our booths. We, uh, we organized these booths with participation of uh, Polish universities all over the world. And uh, as the reality has changed, uh, we also decided to, to participate in virtual fairs. And uh, actually, we, uh, we did it last year. And uh, personally, I would actually, I think that this kind of fairs are really effective. And uh, I found them really, uh, really satisfactory. And there are a lot of advantages, um, because apart from the fact that uh, well, right now it is like alternative tool for keeping in touch with uh, our prospective students. Uh, it saves money and time. Uh, but of course, uh, it won't replace uh, direct contact. And uh, sometimes there are some difficulties uh, related to, for example, um, different time zones. So recently we have uh, had the first in Latin America that lasted from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. So you can imagine. Uh, but uh, according to me, it's still a satisfactory solution. And based on the statistics uh, we received from uh, the organizers of this first, uh, it really uh, pays off. So if it's about technical side, it's kind of chat. Yeah, but we, we don't have uh, another option. We have to follow um, new digital tools and participate because uh, otherwise we, we won't be um, an, an actor in this uh, on this uh, uh, international education market, so so we have to adjust uh, to it. Ah, okay, I see that we have uh, my slide. Uh, so uh, here you have uh, study neuro project. So with the Ready Study Go Poland campaign, we are also a part of uh, study neuro project, and uh, this is uh, actually project led by uh, European Commission. And uh, the aim is uh, to promote European higher education area. Uh, and, uh, and by actually participating in this project, uh, we promote Poland uh, using digital tools uh, provided by European Commission. So here you can some examples uh, of, this, uh, of those uh, tools. And uh, we are publishing information about Polish uh, universities uh, on their social media and uh, and uh, also uh, we publish uh, some articles. And if we go to the next uh, slide, uh, I would like to explain actually why, uh, why we do so. Because our target group and potential students uh, represent uh, Generation Z. And uh, well, actually, probably you also belong to this, um, to this generation. And as you can see in this slide, people representing this group are so-called digital natives. So for them, um, Actually, digital tours are the uh, natural environment. So for us, in order to reach them, uh, using the social media and uh, and website is a must. So we can't uh, we we can't actually forget about it. Um, when you uh, next slide, please. Nina. Uh, we actually uh, are present on um, all social media. So Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube. 
uh, actually we, uh, Instagram, actually, this account has been uh, created recently, so it's quite, uh, quite new. And of course, for this uh, group Generation Z, the most relevant uh, uh, ones are Instagram and Facebook. Uh, but still, we are present also on uh, on other. Um, but being visible is not the only way to, to to stand out from the crowd. Uh, we have to come up with new ideas, some campaigns. Uh, well, recently, I, I have impression that we all have been flooded with uh, information, and I personally feel sometimes overwhelmed with it. So if you would like to stand out from the crowd, you have to really come up with some innovative idea, and uh, you have to boost uh, people's uh, engagement and, uh, and trust. And uh, that's why we decided to, to organize uh, the contest you mentioned uh, at the beginning of, uh, of today's meeting. So uh, digital ambassadors, here you have a posters, uh, poster. Uh, so, um, well, our agency, as I mentioned, is uh, relatively young. We are almost uh, three years old. And uh, while cooperating with international agencies, uh, we have been inspired by their projects and ideas. So they had kind of similar ones. Uh, the Netherlands studying in Sweden, uh, they had, uh, the, they have still um, this kind of projects, and uh, we decided that we uh, we want to engage um, a higher number of uh, of students uh, into our projects. Uh, and uh, in last December, uh, we published this contest, and at the beginning of 2020. Uh, we have selected uh, 25 uh, people representing 23 uh, countries. And <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and uh, and uh, well, this uh, this project uh, I found really successful. Uh, we invited uh, our digital ambassadors for some workshops. If we go to next slide, uh, Nina. Uh, there, is, there should be a picture from, uh, from the workshop that uh, took place uh, in Facebook headquarters in Warsaw. Um, our um, digital ambassadors participate in uh, promotional and information videos, materials. Uh, information about them uh, is also available uh, on our website, which can be actually, yes, uh, in this slide you can see um, our um, ambassadors, some of us, the part of them. And actually, I forgot to, to mention that Nina, but yeah, Nina told it at the beginning, but Nina is one of our uh, ambassador, digital ambassador representing Georgia and Poland and Anders program because uh, ambassadors are also beneficiaries of uh, our uh, programs. Um, of course, um, well, we found. Um, we found our ambassadors like uh, the main actually actors right now for our promotion because uh, they have contacts uh, in their home countries. They uh, they can support us in promotional activities. Um, they have experience in using digital tools because actually maybe it's important to mention that one of the requirements to participate in this um, contest uh, was to have the experience uh, in using social media. So for example, uh, in the next slide, uh, you can see Aylan, who has her own uh, video blog, where she's publishing video about uh, her life uh, in Poland, and this is really interesting, so I also recommend you to follow her. Um, yes, and, uh, and, yes, and uh, then in March, uh, the epidemic broke out. And, uh, and as you know, everything, uh, everything changed. So we also moved uh, ours and our digital ambassadors uh, activities um, to communicate with international students uh, who stayed in Poland. Uh, so we invited our digital ambassadors to, to, be, to support uh, stay at home action. And they also shared in their picture what they uh, can do in isolation. Um, some of them, like uh, there is example uh, in the slide, um, also supported their closest community. So, uh, for example, by preparing this kind of uh, visor against coronavirus or masks, or, or they were supporting uh, other activities, they were really involved. So, 
So this is actually, uh, it, it was really um, successful for us and uh, and we uh, we try to keep in touch uh, with them. So even um, uh, even during uh, pandemic, we uh, we organized uh, some conferences online. And uh, oh, here yes, here there's an example of this uh, this conference. And in the next slide, um, there is uh, one event that we decided to organize after some consul consultation. Uh, we decided to organize uh, webinars for uh, for international students and uh, uh, with the participation of uh, psychologists, uh, scientists, for example, the, it was one scientist who uh, invented test poly, Polish test for coronavirus. Uh, but also we were talking about career. This, this poster is from the latest uh, webinar we organized uh, that was entitled Competences of the Future. Um, and uh, we have uh, had more than 35,000 views uh, of the webinars on our social media. So this is actually, um, it, was, it was also very really successful. And, uh, and I mention it uh, because it's, uh, it's really important uh, to also keep this uh, engagement, to, to build these relations and, uh, um, and also to, 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 to show uh, ambassador who who is international students uh, in, a student in Poland and um, it's it's a great uh, also person uh, if uh, international students uh, students have some question they can also uh, always contact uh, our digital ambassador and uh, and actually it may turn out to to be decisive factor in. Uh, in, in choosing, uh, for example, Poland uh, as a study destination. So this is uh, this is really important uh, for us. Uh, this uh, this whole project. Uh, so uh, now your digital investor has got a question. Uh, I know that this is a relatively new program. And uh, what inspired you to initiate it? Uh, what were your expectations, and have they got fulfilled? And what are your plans and ideas for the second edition of the program? Um, well. Personally, uh, and, I, and I hope that Andre agree with me uh, because we both work uh, on this program. Always. <laughs> yes, good <laughs> yes, answer. Um, that this this project was actually the the best decision ever, I would say. And but actually, being at that time at the beginning of 2020, uh, I think that we didn't know uh, to what extent the word digital will be prophetic, right? <laughs> because uh, we still uh, wanted to involve our digital ambassadors uh, into uh, into promotion. Uh, they, actually we wanted to invite them to to go with us um, to participate in the first abroad uh, and then right now everything is online so um, so unfortunately we couldn't uh, but I think that uh, their support is uh, is actually priceless it's it's uh, we we can't really um, uh, I, I couldn't imagine uh, at the beginning that they will be so supportive that it is uh, they are not paid, maybe it's important. And uh, really everything uh, uh, they do, uh, they do because they feel some kind of mission. So uh, it's, it's really great uh, project. So I'm, I'm really proud of this, uh, this group. And uh, we already also uh, noticed uh, based on the statistics uh, that uh, we have some growth uh, in interests uh, uh, from the countries that our ambassadors can, come from. Uh, so there are, uh, well, of course, we, we see also the increase uh, of number um, in number of international students in Poland, but also we, we can observe an increase uh, in uh, international um, beneficiaries uh, of our programs. So, so we also um, have this kind of statistics that we can observe that, uh, that it works um, and uh, their uh, support is, uh, is really valuable for us. Okay. Um. Yes. Um, ah, yes. Um, so, so to sum up, um, because I, I see that we are running out of time, um, social media and uh, websites, um, well, are a big part of our promotion and communication activities. And here I wanted to uh, to finish. I wanted to to show you some two quotes. Uh, first one: We don't have a choice on whether we do social media. 
uh, the question is how well uh, we do it. So this is actually uh, this is actually um, the answer to, to everything. So, uh, but you have to think it over how how to um, to be visible, how to increase your visibility or an international education market, but also uh, how to stand out uh, from the crowd. Uh, uh, that people could be attracted to, to your offer. And the second one, it's, uh, it says that uh, social media are a dialogue, not a monologue, and some people don't understand that. Social media is more like a telephone than a television. So this is actually the reason we organized this uh, Digital Ambassadors Contest. Uh, this is the reason why we are still uh, reacting to what our followers or international students are writing uh, you have to be you have to respond uh, to, to the messages even if it's uh, due to different time zones it's it's really late because uh, they can be uh, your student in the future it's maybe more up to the universities but as we are um, coordinating the official campaign and we have our social media we we also have to uh, to react uh, to what uh, to, to what our students are writing to us, or uh, listen and uh, and not to forget about uh, community because uh, yes, because uh, if not, uh, does make uh, make sense. So I think that for now it's uh, all from my part. Uh, okay, I think that now it's time for our Q and A session. So uh, if you are watching our Facebook Live and have got questions, please leave them in the comment section. Uh, and if you are uh, watching our live via Zoom, just uh, send us your questions. We are waiting for them for, we'll wait for them for several minutes. On the Facebook, I can see only someone is clapping. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> thank you to our Facebook. Per per perhaps in, in the meantime, uh, I can share one comment. Uh, on, on what Malvina said, uh, cooperation with digital ambassadors, uh, to me, it's one of the really one of the best things uh, in this whole digital context, uh, synergies that we have uh, thanks to cooperation with our partners. So whether there are these are digital ambassadors or whether these are real embassies, Polish or uh, foreign, or um, organizations of Polish diaspora around the world, we have different players, as, as mentioned before. Um, understanding local contexts, uh, well, we can't be experts in everything, but but we what we can look for support of our experts. Thanks to thanks to having uh, net, uh, we can easily connect with the people who are willing to to support us. And um, these are you know very different things. Uh, let's say back again to to this uh, uh, webinar for for Indonesian students. Uh, one tiny thing, but still important, language. English everywhere is a little dif different. To us in Poland, it's bachelor, master, uh, PhD. But in Indonesia, well, they understand it, but for them, it's S1, S2, S3. Uh, in India, it's uh, undergraduate, graduate, postgraduate. So understanding this uh, facilitates dialogue. Uh, people understand on what you're talking about. Um, again, with that Indonesian webinar, uh, from our interaction with our with Indonesian digital ambassador, we understood that Indonesian students are mostly focused on economic studies. So we didn't bore them with talking about uh, go to the best medical school in Poland. We, we focus more on, on uh, having more information on, on economic uh, things, economic uh, faculties related. Uh, so uh, doing this, this uh, research is much easier uh, with, uh, while having partners on coming from the other side of the world or, or sitting in front of the com their computers uh, somewhere else. Uh, well, I would perceive it also as a part of, of digital diplomacy or to be very precise, 
uh, to, according to some definitions, digital foreign policy because diplomacy would be reserved to the to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, right? Uh, as I can see, there are no questions, but I guess it's because the information you provided us with was comprehensive. So I think it's time to sum up uh, our event. Uh, in conclusion, as we see, digital diplomacy has been defined as the use of internet and new information communication technologies, and some people claim that it is solving uh, foreign uh, policy problems using internet. And as we can see, uh, digital diplomacy is not practiced only by foreign affairs ministry, uh, embassies, institutes, or even consulates, but also by organizations such as NAVA, uh, Polish National Agency for Academic Exchange. And thank you for uh, sharing your knowledge and your rich experience today. Uh, on, be on behalf of uh, the Forum of uh, Young Diplomats, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to the uh, whole NAVA team and especially to you, Malvina, and you, Andre, for being here today with us and agreeing to participate in our event and dedicating your time, finding time in your busy schedule. Uh, and uh, as your digital ambassador, I would like to add that I couldn't be more lucky that being a part of your team has been the greatest privilege and uh, uh, pleasure and honor as well. Uh, and thank you for always having my back, for helping me uh, bring my ideas to life and for supporting all of my initiatives. Uh, I would also like to thank fellow members of Forum of Young Diplomats, especially Bartosz Murcicki and Anja Lanina, who have been uh, online <laughs> since the very beginning. And I would like to thank three people from Forum of Young Diplomats, uh, in particular, Anna Lanina, my mentor, who has guided me through all this process and supported me during uh, the preparation process. Stanislav Aprilashvili for being the one person I could always ask for help and advice. And uh, uh, last but not the least, Martin Jonsek, who was actively engaged in promoting our event on social media. Uh, thank you very much, uh, dear participants. Hope to see you soon, uh, hopefully face to face, offline. <laughs> yes, let's hope. <laughs> let's hope. And uh, thank you very much again, and hope to see you at our next events. Thank you very much. Thank the you very much. Hours. Thank you. Thank you.